So I want to say thank you for everybody coming. And I'm Vladimir Starkov. Uh, I'm front-end engineer at Nernet Bank KB, and um, I want to talk about functional programming in the real world. Uh, and from the start, disclaimer, no category theory, no monads, no commonads, no cetoids, and so on. So be safe. Uh, so why functional programming? Because it's declarative, because we want to tell computer what we want to do, and computer will do that. And then we don't want to write more code. We want to write small pieces and then combine them uh, with uh, help of composition to make complex things. So how we can do that? So we will look at two examples, one for synchronous programming and one for asynchronous programming. So let's say synch uh, synchronous programming will take the string, split it by comma, trim array, uh, and reject empty items. So how we will do that in imperative programming in the usual way. So we have a function which takes string, then uh, inside uh, nested calls it will split by comma, then it will trim array and reject empty items. But it's hard to read. Uh, it's working perfectly, but it's hard to read. So what we can do? We have these three instructions and we can convert them in the declarative code. And this, and this will look like this. So the first function, which will split by comma, uh, return result to the second function, it will trim that array, and then we will reject empty items. And this works perfectly fine. And this declarative. So the second example with asynchronous programming. So let's say we want to implement uh, our client-side API library, which need to fetch JSON. So how we will do that in the first place? We will fetch URL, we then we will check status, and then we will parse JSON. So it's, it's kind of better, uh, but still we, uh, man, we have to use then in all the calls. So we can do better. Uh, so we are declaring pyp function, uh, and it will, t uh, not URL, but fetch in the first place. So it will fetch URL, it will check status, and uh, parse JSON file. And it, will, and it will work the same way as previous one. So it much nicer, and that's better. And, but you will ask me how to debug that function, because you can't just look inside, but you can. We need a new function, which, uh, will not do anything else like tap, but invoke a first function uh, on that value. Uh, and how we will use that? So the function which we will pass to the tab, it will uh, invoke console lock on the value which we passed. Uh, and then we will just return it. So if we will uh, place lock function uh, between all the steps uh, and see what will happen if we will pass hello Nordic.js. So in the first step, we will get uh, the same string as we uh, put into the function. Uh, after the first step, we will get array. Uh, after the second uh, step with trim array, we will get trimmed uh, items in that array. After the last step, in the end, we will get the same result as the, the function itself. So, and that's quite useful for writing tests, uh, and you will be able to see how your function works in each stage. And that's cool. Uh, so, Summary. summary. Uh, if you have simple functions, you can combine them to make complicated, complex stuff uh, with help of pipe, which basically take a lot of functions, uh, return a function which will take the value and pass this value through all the functions which you passed in the first place. Pipe the same, but for asynchronous programming, and it will use promises. And tap is, will help you to debug your functional programming code. Uh, and references, you will find these slides in the repo uh, as a part of functional programming workshop. Slides on this URL. And so in functions we trust, thank you for attending. Uh, you will find me as I am Starkov on GitHub and Twitter. Thank you all. <laughs> Yay. Uh, and all of the um, speakers of Lightning Talks will be on the speaker corner right there. So. He's taking my job now, but that's fine, you know? Sorry. <laughs> no, just kidding.